Matthew? Matthew, how you doing? Matthew, I want you to meet your new roommate, Nick. Nick, come on in. <laughs> Nick Chase, Matthew Wiggins. Hi. Hi. I knew this would be great. <laughs> Matthew is the youngest student in the university, and Nick is a good balance. <laughs> So, Nick, uh, how many roommates walked out on you so far? None. Yeah, me neither. None. <laughs> Is this all your stuff? Yeah, you see, I've uh, sort of dedicated my life to the study of fish. Yeah, I did that with women. <laughs> uh, nothing against the kid, man. Yeah, he's a real genius. It's like rooming with Mozart. <laughs> Don't you think I should have someone more my own age? We don't have anyone like that. <laughs> well, I'm sure you two want to get to know one another. Yeah, but... Now, if there's any problems, just remember, I'm your dorm counselor, and I want to hear about it. In fact... Uh... Gotta go. <laughs> Major Bozo. Well, can I have the upper bunk? Can you reach it? <laughs> <laughs> so, just graduate from high school? No. The Marine Corps. No kidding? Wow, that's terrific. Yeah, I figured I'd try everything I missed, you know, sort of like a new beginning. Hey, you know, there's a fish like that. The orange spotted wrasse. In the middle of its life, it completely changes itself. There you go, that's me. I'm a wrasse. <laughs> yeah, it uh, turns a dirty gray and grows a humongous lump on its forehead. <laughs> I was doing good for a second there. You're doing good, you're doing great. You know, I think so, kid, you know. I want to study and learn everything I can, but I also want to raise some help. Have a great time. I ain't too old to be soon forgotten And I'm not too young to try I tried it one way, now I'll try it another And it's not too late and I will soon discover the answer Looking for some answers Your heart be broken by the look in a lady's eye You might be younger but you'll soon be older And everybody sometimes needs a shoulder for some answers Looking for some answers Even the teachers need some answers I think I'll skip shaving today. Good idea. Yeah, you're right. So, Nick, how old were you when you started shaving? Six. <laughs> Me too. So you've seen a lot of life, huh? I guess so. I can tell by those eyes. Those eyes have seen it all. And then some. I guess. You ever kill anyone? I'm giving it some thought. <laughs> I shouldn't be in college. I should be helping the farmer or working with the American Indian. Then why are you here? My dad promised me a Porsche. <laughs> Hey, you guys going to that party over at Tampa Betas? When is it? Friday through Sunday. Yeah. Count me in. <laughs> well, I can't make it. Make what? Well, the dance, the party. See, my dad's flying in special, take me out for my birthday. What are you, 12? Uh, no, I happen to be 19. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think they would have believed 18. Yeah, 18 would have been better. 
cares about those guys anyway? Just a bunch of bozo morons. Hey, you're getting to sound like a sad sack. You get a haircut. <laughs> Where are the books? <laughs> uh, are all those your books? Yeah, I couldn't stop. I always wanted to read these guys. Shakespeare, Melville, Stephen King. <laughs> hey, Nick, there you are. What, have you been hiding from me? No. How'd you find me? Well, I followed you. <laughs> oh, great. These are classics. That's right. Yeah, I remember reading them in junior high. Yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd brush up on them. You want to get some lunch? I already grabbed the hamburger. Oh, man, that's the worst thing for you. What? Look, Nick, there's probably a 10-pound ball of meat lodged in your colon right now, ready to destroy every corpuscle in your body. <laughs> Does the fun ever stop? got a lot of books here about fish. Yeah, they're my life. Well, I mean, I study them. I love to watch fish. You know when they're swimming in the water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're beautiful. They're so graceful. You know, they seem almost like they're flying. Hey, you know, there are flying fish. They can go up to 300 feet in the air. No. Yeah, and talk about beautiful. Well, there's your kiss and gourami, your rainbow darter, your butterfly fish. Their colors are insane. Maybe we could watch them together sometime. What? Together. Yeah, yeah, you and I, as in a group. Why? It could be fun. Fun, yeah, sure, sure, fun. It, it'll be us and the fish. Kind of like a double date. Sounds terrific. Yeah, well, it was nice to meet you. What was that? That was goodbye and fish talk. Oh. <laughs> And I'm sure this will be a very enjoyable experience for all of us. And, uh, Mr. Chase? Hi. You don't have to take notes yet. I was just trying to impress you. <laughs> I appreciate your candor. Okay, during the semester, we'll be studying abnormal behavior, causes of depression, creativity. Yes. Is attendance mandatory? <laughs> We'll also study language, intelligence. Do I have a volunteer? You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, you see the nine dots on the blackboard? It's possible to connect them with just three lines. Would you mind trying? <laughs> you can use chalk. <laughs> we'll also learn why people behave the way they do. For example, what would you say is the most important reason why we like someone? Yeah, if they have the same kind of personality? No, not the main reason. Uh-huh, if they wear the same clothes. No, but that's very scary. <laughs> Let's see, um... Mr. Wiggins. Hello. Hi. Hi. Let's see, why we like other people? Well, you know, I'm not real sure about that, but I do know that fish hang around together because... Fish. Yes, ma'am, fish. You know, we can learn a lot from fish. Well, how they communicate, uh, how they think. You know, fish are a sophisticated but legless society. <laughs> I'll get back to you later. Uh, Mr. Chase? That's me again. I guess we like someone if they, if they take us as we are. Say you ask a friend to a fancy restaurant and you order lobster. Nothing against your little friends. <laughs> Now, the lobster comes, you might tear off one of its legs and uh, bite into the shell. Now your friend, she looks at you like uh, she loves what you're doing. She might even eat some shell too. <laughs> That's right. You're kidding. No, the main reason why we like someone is if we think the other person likes us too. That's very good, Mr. Chase. I'm writing that down. <laughs> Mr. Chase, I think this is going to be a very interesting semester. Thank you. And uh, when you figure in my grade, remember I like you. <laughs> we'll learn to broaden our ideas, to not be restricted by traditional boundaries. Yeah, but 
Can you do this? Still going to the party? Hey, I am the party. <laughs> well, this here's my roommate, uh, Jeff. Hi, I got 4% body fat. <laughs> Hi, I got the other 96%. <laughs> Jason, Jason, I've been looking for Nick, you. Nick, Nick, you know, I've been meaning to tell you how good you are for Matthew. Listen, it ain't working out with the kid and me. He clings too much. Well, if you need me, you know where I am. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how to reach you. I'll be there. <laughs> hey, Nick, you look pretty sharp. Yeah, I have to agree with you. <laughs> I learned this trick from an old gunny sergeant of mine. How to comb the hair straight up. So it gives you a full head up on top. <laughs> Great. When are you going to do it? <laughs> I already did it. And it looks terrific. Yeah. Your papa call? No, he should be flying in any minute. That's some jacket. I got this on leave in the Philippines. It looked better in the Philippines. You know, some of the most beautiful fish in the world are in the Philippines. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. Most of mine had sauce on them. <laughs> hey, have a good birthday, okay? Me, I'm gonna bop till I drop. Hello? Dad, how you doing? Yeah, I missed you too. Were you at the airport? Oh. I understand. Yeah, I wasn't even sure you were coming in. Yeah, I'll look for my present in the mail. Okay, I love you. Bye. Hey, I'm sorry, kid. Yeah. Oh, no, he just got called up to this big emergency meeting. He'll be up here to see me real soon. It happens. Yeah, yeah, sure, no big deal. I hate him. Don't talk about your father like that. Look, Nick, I can't even believe I let him pull this one on me again. Just go to your party, okay? Okay, why don't you come with me? You're asking me? I can't believe it either. <laughs> no, no, thank you. I don't need your pity. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Nick. Ever since I got here and you got here, I've wanted to be your friend. You just don't want to have anything to do with me. Look, that has nothing to do with you, kid. That's just me, okay? Let's go to the party. We'll have a great time. Maybe you'll meet a girl. Oh, a girl. Yeah, I did really great with the girl in the bookstore. She liked you. Come on, Nick. She thought I was a stupid moron bozo fool. <laughs> you really think she liked me? <laughs> I don't know how she kept her hands off you. Yeah, she was beautiful. I should have said something, but I didn't. You said goodbye and fish talk. <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Hey, you got a second chance there, pal. Everybody thinks they missed a moment, but there's lots of moments. You think so? Of course. Let's get to the bookstore before it closes and you ask that girl out on a date. No, Nick, I better not. Is this the way you're going to live? Sitting here? Come on, buddy, take a chance. Get in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Okay, happy 14th birthday. One second. I have a great present for you. <laughs> I'm looking for a girl. Try the docks. <laughs> Not for me, for him. She works in a bookstore. She's very, very pretty. Tell her. Well, see, she's like a combination of an angelfish and a butterfly fish. You're a strange boy, aren't you? 
Can anybody help? We're looking for this girl. It looks like a fish. <laughs> no, it's not like that at all. Tell them. Okay, well, see, she sort of looks like she'd be floating in the air, skimming in the water, evening mist clinging to her body. Evening mist. That's Melissa Moran. Yeah. She works in the bookstore. I think she went home for the weekend. Yeah. Oh, what's her address? I'm not allowed to give out that information. Come on, lady. Think back when you were a girl. Way back. <laughs> Maybe there was a guy who uh, loved you very much. Use your imagination. <laughs> One day he goes looking for you, but he loses your address. So he can't find you. Rodney. <laughs> Maybe he's out there roaming from house to house. Oh, that's so like him. <laughs> looking for his one true love. Why don't you help this little boy out, please? Harbor Springs. I don't even know what I'm going to say to Melissa. I love that name. It's so lyrical. Melissa. 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 Oh, would you like some gum? Thank you. How about you, Melissa? Get out of here. Nick, I'm going nuts. I gotta get my mind off Melissa. So, uh, how was the Marines? Fine. Then was then, now is now. Talk about something else, okay? Okay, sure. Did you call each other leathernecks? <laughs> What's the matter with your kid? I wish I knew. So, you think uh, Melissa will like me? I don't know. I'm having a hard time myself. Did you do any fighting back then? You're not going to stop, are you? I can be an unbelievable pest. Oh, come on, Nick. What was it like? When I got in, we were kids. Brats. Just like you. From all over. And you became a family. And then suddenly half of, uh, half of you are gone. They send more brats. And you start a new family. And after a while, it got hard. That's all. So you stop being close to anyone? I'll be close to you. You got your fish. Yeah, my fish. And Melissa. I don't even know what I'm going to say to Melissa. Okay, you're going to ask her out. Suppose she laughs at me. She's not going to laugh at you. Okay, suppose she spits on me. That would be a definite setback. <laughs> Just be yourself, okay, kid? I hate when people say that. Nick, I don't even know who I am. I'm lots of different people. I see your point. Pick the best one. <laughs> what do you think of her? She's beautiful. Okay. Here goes nothing. Oh. <laughs> Hi. I'm Nick, and that's Matthew. Hi. And you're... Not interested. No. Uh, I just thought you're from Saginaw. I go to the university there. You go to college? Yeah, I'm a freshman. You must have been held back a lot. No, no. I'm just starting over, that's all. Yeah? Sometimes I wish I could start over. Do you work in Saginaw? Yeah, I'm a waitress in a pizza restaurant. No kidding. I love pizza. In fact, I owe most of my body to pizza. <laughs> But what did you say your name was? Sharon. Sharon, where, where exactly do you work? Or sometimes I get hungry for Italian food. The name of the restaurant is Pizza, Pizza, Pizza. I think I can remember that. <laughs> I hope you do. Sometimes I surprise myself. Look, I'm not going to be able to do that with Melissa. Sure you can. She's going to say no. She's definitely going to say no. Look, I've been all over. And when a woman says no to a date, she don't always mean no. It's great advice. Thanks. Can you say that again? You know, you really are a pest. <laughs> Don't 
doing this. You should not be doing this. Oh, come on, Nick, this is crazy. Let's go. Well, hello. Are you friends of Melissa's? Not the best. Really. Well, come on in. Nothing to it. What's going on here? Looks like a party. We better find Melissa. I'm very, very, very happy. I'm very, very glad. I can't believe I'm doing this, Nick. Hey, tell Melissa when you saw her in the bookstore, you felt very close to her. Tell her you felt there was a sexual attraction between the both of you. And don't giggle. We're about to start. I never seen a prettier bride. So, what do you think? I think he could take this as a no. Great time tonight, Nick. That's good. Yeah, but I made a fool of myself. You know, I've been thinking about that. When Melissa saw you, she probably was having second thoughts about her marriage. <laughs> then this big, attractive guy comes in. You. She wanted you, but she had to hold herself back because she was already committed. Well, that's crazy. You really believe that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so do I. Nick, how'd you end up in the Marines? Why? Well, I don't know. You just don't seem like the type. Nobody's the type until you get in there. Well, I didn't mean anything by it. Look, kid, the truth of it is I think the country needed us. That's all. Good night, Nick. Good night, Matthew. Good night, fish. <laughs> Up next, Macaulay Calkin, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and Mean Gene Okerlund introduce videos by Paula Abdul and Michael Bolton on Saturday morning videos only on NBC. Another diagnostic tool that we use to evaluate patients. It's what the people see in a picture like this that's important. Now, would anyone care to give it a try? Linda. Well, 
I see a girl who rushed Tridell, who didn't make it. When she told her boyfriend in the bedroom back there, he killed himself. <laughs> she probably would have made it if she hadn't worn that icky skirt. Okay, can anybody top that? <laughs> Matthew, how about you? No, I don't believe in those things at all. Oh, come on, Matthew, go ahead, give it a try. All right, Miss Adler, but I still don't believe in these things. Okay. Well, uh, there are two people there, and they're together in the same house. Um, they're upset about something. Probably because... Well, who knows? Probably because they're disappointed in their son. In their son who never, ever did anything they wanted him to do and never lived up to any of their expectations. <laughs> See, I told you there was nothing to it. Thank you very much. Uh, would anybody else care to... Mr. Chase, great. Two people. <laughs> uh, they just come back from their honeymoon. <laughs> she made the, their first meal, uh, linguine and clam sauce. It didn't come out too good. He's lying there thinking of his mother's sauce. And she's standing there thinking of her first boyfriend. <laughs> Actually, that was really very good. <laughs> As you can see, there's no real right or wrong answer here. It's just how a person feels when they look at the picture. But they got it all wrong. Sheldon, you have something to contribute? Well, it's obvious. This is a guy and a girl, and she's very sexy and passionate and lusty, and he just can't fulfill her desires. So, she's on her way to my house. What's that slime you're putting on your head? Loose. What's it for? Gives your hair more body. It makes it look thicker. Let me try that. <laughs> it works. I don't know. I thought we'd catch a flick tonight, maybe. Sounds good. Hey, hey, you guys going to the movies? Uh, maybe we'll join you. Oh, we'd love for you to come, but uh, you can't. <laughs> Okay, no big deal. Nick, do you know what it took for me to ask them? I hate being rejected. I know, but you'll get used to it. I didn't mean it that way. Nick, girls reject me all the time, and now guys are starting to do it. Nick, there's not much left. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take, but uh, we're going to become part of this place. I'm on the outside looking in. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. Nick, they're playing our song. Hey, Carl. Yeah? Listen, we were thinking of going to the movie tonight. You want to come? Oh, I can't do it, guys. I'm going away for the weekend. Where are you going? Wounded knee. <laughs> Why? I want to empathize with the Native American. I want to share the Indian experience. Why don't you just stay here and we'll steal your furniture? <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I got 200 years of treachery to atone for. Want to give it a try? <laughs> hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, we heard you guys talking, and we thought we'd join your bull session. I love that word, bull session. Nick, this is our first college bull session. Well, okay, take it, Nick. Do you guys mind if we join you? No, no, okay. sit down. Thanks. So, uh, what are you guys talking about? What do you think they're talking about? Women. All women or just specific parts? All women. We're talking about the best way to meet someone. Nick, you've been a Marine. You've been all over the world. What do you say when you first walk up to a woman? Hi. How do you do? Uh, my name is Nick. <laughs> 
You do what you do and you hope they see something nice inside. That's all. Women. Women. <laughs> okay, jump in any time now, guys. So, you date a lot of chicks? Yeah, yeah. But they always want to go out with dumb jocks. I'm on the football team. Soccer team. Baseball. Lacrosse. Or jocks that aren't dumb. What was your sport, Nick? It's me. Go ahead. Tell him. He used to be a boxer. Really? Yeah. I fought pro for a little bit. Yeah? How'd you do? Were you any good? People said I, I reminded them of Rocky Marciano. We both like Squangeli. <laughs> so, uh, Matthew, you into sports? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Which ones? Well, all of them, at the same time. What's your favorite? Well, y you like what you're good at. So I like everything. <laughs> yeah, but what's your main sport? Specifically. Specifically? Well, there's swimming, uh, long distance running, and of course, the biathlon. <laughs> biathlon, what's that? Oh, come on, guys, don't tell me that you've never watched a Winter Olympics. The biathlon? Come on, it's where you ski and shoot. It's a blood sport. Right up my alley. Oh, yeah, so uh, what kind of skis do you use? Uh, the ones where the tips go up. <laughs> yeah, but what kind? The long ones. Yeah, but what's the brand? Hey, will you guys get off my back? Okay, you guys want to hear the truth? Okay, when I was nine years old, I played baseball with my father, and he hit a line drive into my nose, and then I never played anything again. You guys happy now? Stupid moron bozo jocks. Well, we're really settling in here. <laughs> I really blew it in front of those guys, didn't I? No, no. You were honest, you were you. We'll make other friends. I never liked sports anyway. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I have my studies. And I have my fish. It's a full life. I understand, kid. You think I'm a real wussy, don't you? I'm not thinking nothing. I'm just gonna hit the rack, that's all. Well, I, I wanted to be an athlete. I mean, I would have loved to play ball with my dad once in a while. I'm just not coordinated. How do you know? Because there's some things you just know. You give up too easy. That's what I know. You got to figure a sport that you're good at. Come on, face it, Nick. I wasn't meant to be physical. It's like with the fish. Some of them are out there playing, and some of them are spectators. Oh, come on. There's no fish that's aggressive and uh, sort of condensed? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the dusky damsel. Anything with a better name? No, oh, that's it. They're small, but if their nest is threatened, they attack with the ferocity of the barracuda. Well, there you go. That's you. No, I think I'm more of a kissing Rami. What? Hey, you could be a dusky damsel if you just push yourself a little bit. What about hockey? Can't skate. That would be a drawback. <laughs> How about boxing? Are you kidding? No, no, you fight guys your own way. So you be boxing other runs. Other people. <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna check your reflexes. Okay, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch you in the nose. I'm gonna punch you in the nose. I'm gonna punch you in the nose. So how am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, but maybe we should get a backup sport in case you kill somebody in the ring. Face it, Nick. There's just nothing for me. Come on. Okay. Wrestling. Wrestling? Yeah. Isn't that where they twist you up and uh, give you uh, atomic spine crushers and tweak your nose? No, not in college wrestling. You look like you'd be agile, like you'd be quick. Yeah, when I'm afraid, I'm quick. It's up to you. There's no hurry about the decision. Whatever you say. Look at you. You move like a cat. Excuse me. What is it? Well, I know that this might seem a little funny to you, but I was thinking about joining... Ah. <laughs> Twist that arm. There's a lot more gift there. But it's not that important. So you want to join the wrestling team? Well, it's either between the wrestling team or the stamp club. What's your name? Ah. Matt. 
Rusty Wiggins. Hey, who said a knee can only go one way? <laughs> you ever done any wrestling? Absolutely not. That's okay. I'm looking for someone about your size. How much you weigh exactly? How much you need? Why are you asking that? Because I'm afraid you'll break off what you can't use. <laughs> this could be great for both of us. You might be just the person I'm looking for. Come on, how much you weigh? 110 pounds. That's perfect. 180. <laughs> hey, guy. Fresh meat. Matthew. Rise and shine, Matthew. What? Time to get up, kid. Nick, you just broke up the only date I had all week. <laughs> what time is it? Five o'clock. Are you crazy? Oh, time to train and to, to get your juices going. You think I like this? I had to get up every morning like this when I was a drill instructor. I hate it. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> You just witnessed the secret of being a good drill sergeant. <laughs> Never trust yourself. <laughs> now, come on, kid. We gotta get ready for your wrestler match. Nick, I think that's against the rules. <laughs> no, no. We're gonna swing this around and tone your body up. Nick, I already have a coach. He's gonna teach you the moves, kid. <clears throat> Me, I'm gonna get you in shape. We're gonna do sit-ups, leg raises, sprints, leg... <laughs> Myself. It was like you spoke right to my muscles. It's time to sweat blood, kid. You had to say that. What are you doing now? I'm gonna call my father. At this time? Yeah, I want to get to him before the stock market opens. Dad, hi. Well, uh, no, no, everything's okay, really. Dad, listen. Yeah, school's great, my fish are good. Dad, I got to tell you, I'm on the wrestling team. No, Dad, I'm not the manager. I'm a wrestler. Yeah, and I was wondering if you might be able to come down and watch me sometime. Great. Thanks, Dad. Let's go sweat some blood. This is it. Yeah. 300 people are waiting to see you wrestle. Nick? Yeah. I'm not going. What? Nick, I'm not a wrestler. I'm a lover. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a lover. Well, at least I want a chance to find out if I'm a lover. You're just nervous, kid. Nick, I'm blaming this whole thing on you and that dumb sledgehammer of yours. Nick, tell me something. What kind of grown man goes around carrying a sledgehammer in the trunk of his car? I know what you're going through, kid. Nick, you have no idea what I'm going through. You know something? I've discovered something about myself. I've discovered I'm scared. 
An old trainer of mine, you know what he used to say? Everybody's afraid. Everybody. Both the coward and the hero are feeling the same fear. But it's what you do with the fear that counts. I'm taking my fear to Hawaii. <laughs> what about your pop? What about him? He's gonna be out there. Don't you want him to be proud of you? He's really gonna be proud of me. You're gonna try, kid. Oh, Nick, come on. I've always tried. Nick, I remember when I was a little kid, my dad always wanted this big, tall athlete for a son. Nick, you know what I did? I went to the store and I bought this chaining bar. And every day for 45 minutes, I hung by that chaining bar, by my heels. I thought I might grow an inch. Nick, my father thought he was raising a bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's then, okay? Now's now. We better go. Okay, Nick, I'm going. But Nick, if anything happens to me, don't you dare eat my fish. <laughs> Roomies, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling for Dearborn Tech, Terry Gallagher. For Saginaw, Johnny Newton. I was like the hyperventilator about 10 in the morning. Wait, you're up next. Break a leg. He's an inspiration to all of us. Have you seen my father? No, I don't know what he looks like. Well, he sort of looks like someone who just got out of a limbs. Hey, there he is. Yeah, he looks kind of nervous. Yeah, I guess he just doesn't want to rub up against anyone. <laughs> They're gonna be cheering for you just like that. They're gonna be really popular. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, you are. These things have a way of snowball. First you win the match, but then you become president of your class, and before you know it, you're the governor of Montana dating Deborah Winger. And now for our next match in the 110-pound class, from Saginaw, Matthew, the dusky damsel, Wigan. Dusky damsel? Nick, what'd you do? I figured you needed some glamour. Nick, I sound like a fish with a corsage. Go get him, Dusky. And from Dearborn Tech, Gene Stockton. We should be dancing. Oh. You know, something, you look a lot prettier if you smile. Please smile. Oh. Hey, is this some kind of social statement? Nick, the sledgehammer, quick! Well, oh, you know, you should smell good. <laughs> Silly. Come on, let's just forget the whole thing. That's tough. How you doing, kid? I guess it's over between me and Deborah Winger, huh? Hello, Matthew? Dad. Hi, Dad. I know what you're thinking right now. You think that was a girl. 
You're wrong, Dad. That wasn't a girl. That was a guy dressed up as a girl. Matthew, it was a girl. Yeah, Dad, it was a girl. But, Dad, I think she was on steroids. I could have taken her on a cigar. Well, maybe you'd do better the next time, huh? Right. What I mean, Matthew, is it really wasn't that bad. Thanks, Dad. Dad, I want you to meet my roommate, Nick. Nick's Dad. Dad's Nick. How you doing? Hi. And Matthew's told me all about you. So, uh, how do you like living with all of Matthew's fish? Not bad. The sound of the bubbles helped me sleep. Nick helped me train. <laughs> well, he did a fine job. <laughs> and you know, they're making women tougher and stronger nowadays. You know, you should see some of the ones I dated. <laughs> Look, you two got a lot to catch up with, probably. Let me get out of your way. No, no, listen, uh, I'd love to stay around, but I've got a plane to catch. But Matthew, I'll get back here as soon as I can. Great. Matthew, you keep up the good work, okay? Thanks, Dad. Hey, he really looked proud of you. Come on, Nick, I know what's going on. No, no, I was watching him. He was getting into this stuff. You think? Absolutely. He's just not the type to slobber all over you. Yeah, come on. He could have at least ate for a pizza or something. Pizza? That's a great idea, buddy. I'm hungry. Me too. Let's get going. Right. And then uh, maybe you can wrestle the waitress for some extra pepperoni. <laughs> Lobster brings you our shrimp festival. Make your spirits fly. Eleven shrimp specials the way we know you love them. Starting at $6.95. Make you flip with every tip of every shrimp you try. From our sizzling shrimp scampi to shrimp and lobster to our huge shrimp feast. Now at the shrimp festival. Only at Red Lobster. We know how you love seafood. Who has more big, beautiful almonds than any other popular chocolate bar? The new Mars bar. For the best things in life. One great little reward just got a little greater. Ooh. Alberto dusts again. With my European studying hairspray. The ultra-fine mist sprays on evenly for super hold that won't let your styles go. New Alberto European hairspray with ultra-fine mist. For new super hold. You're playing it? Yeah, it was a couple years ago. I'm uh, much better now. You gotta be kidding. That sounds beautiful. I'm glad you're playing it. Well, you know, I'm playing it mostly because of the fish. You know, ever since I started playing it, they uh, they seem much, much happier. <laughs> Come on. The fish eat us? <laughs> yeah. You know, scientists used to believe that fish were deaf. And then they found this inner ear. And now we just have to watch what we say. How did you learn so much? I don't know. I just uh, soak up things. My dad says I'm like a sponge. Yeah, well, my dad said I was a sponge, too, but I think he meant it different than your father. Come on, Nick, you know lots of things. I'm okay. You know, you have trouble with an amphibious vehicle, I'm your guy. <laughs> this kind of stuff uh, is sort of out of my league. 
Well, no big deal, no big deal. Just, uh, just listen a little bit more. Hey, after 20 years of bugles, this is a pretty big adjustment. I'll see you after class. Okay. cycle the male anglerfish attaches himself to the female by sinking his teeth into her side now as the female grows the male is gradually enveloped by her flesh until he finally appears as an insignificant bump on the female side it's just like my uncle bob <laughs> well that finishes our discussion of the anglerfish miss gaston class isn't over yet oh i thought we only covered one fish per day <laughs> Let's stretch ourselves. <laughs> now, I have something very exciting to show you. I was going to save this for tomorrow, but it's something I have to share with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Luna Plumieri, the Great Lakes dancer fish. Wow! Holy cow! You're a good audience, Mr. Wiggins. This is an extremely rare species. In all of North America, there is only one other dancer fish in captivity. Not anymore. What's that, Wiggins? Well, the one at the New Hampshire Aquarium, you know, passed away. I didn't know that. It was everywhere. The Oceanography Journal, the Berkeley Review of Ichthyology. I don't know how you guys missed it. Well, they probably didn't care for the fish properly. Dr. Lundwin, they've tried to keep other dancer fish in captivity. You know, they all just seem to die within a couple weeks. Well, don't worry. This specimen is under my care. So, class, the fish was caught yesterday in Lake Michigan. Dr. Ludwin, can we please talk some more about how this fish is probably going to die in a couple weeks? I mean, the class is real upset about it. <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> hey, they're ready to march. So, uh, that'll be it for today. For the next class, I would like you all to read Chapter 21 on reef fishes. Dr. Ludwin. Mr. Wiggins, the subject is closed. Come on, you gotta let him go. Look, this fish is gonna die. Look, this isn't a pet, it's a specimen. Where would we all be if Dr. Louis Pasteur fell in love with his bacteria? God, that's a disgusting thought. <laughs> Dr. Ludwin. To be sure to shut out the lights when you leave. Is openly affectionate in public and cold when you get her alone. Or one who's cold in public but turns into an animal when you're alone. So where's the question? <laughs> I go for openly affectionate in public. Really? I don't care if I'm getting it on, as long as everybody thinks I am. <laughs> yeah, we could pick up a date's about seven. Great. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Cut it out. Bingo! <laughs> Hey guys, this is fun, but enough's enough. What are you gonna do, Sheldon? Uh, turn the other cheek? <laughs> turn the other cheek. <laughs> those guys made me look pretty wimpy, right? What guys? Didn't you just see those two guys humiliate me? I didn't see anything. I did. <laughs> he was totally degraded. <laughs> Thanks for filling him in. Everyone considered him the coward of the county. He never stood one single time to prove the county, prove the county, prove the county wrong, wrong, wrong. Look, look, it's not just you, Sheldon, it's the human condition. We're born, we live in fear, and we die. That's why life's such a hoot. Nick, something terrible is going to happen. What? What is it? Well, over at the science building, they have this fish, and it's going to be dead in a couple weeks. Don't worry about it. They'll flush it. <laughs> Come 
on, Nick. It's not right. It's murder. Let me get this straight. You're talking about a fish here, right? Right. You mean every time I reach for a Mrs. Paul, I'm committing a felony? Come on, Nick. This fish is special. It's one of the rarest fishes in the world. No, kid. You're overreacting. Nick, please just come take a look at it. Right now? Yes. Uh, you said I got two weeks to, to go? Maybe I can visit it when it lapses into a coma. <laughs> Nick, this is important. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll think about it. You're gonna sit here and watch me think? I don't have another class for two hours. You mean to tell me you want me to go eyeball to eyeball with some fish? I just want someone to understand how I feel, that's all. Kid, you fight dirty. Let's go. Here he is, Nick. Oh. The Great Lakes dancer fish. He looks like he ate a bad clam. Come on, Nick, look at him. Okay. Really look at him. Okay, what are you thinking? Truthfully, I'm hoping that's not a reflection. Come on, Nick. Isn't he fascinating? You know, there is something about him. Kind of like a, a nobility. That's all right. You know, it's, it's nice to watch his fins ripple like that, back and forth, back and forth. Hey, you know, I read a study on that once. It said that when people watch fish, their blood pressure actually drops. Sort of like nature's tranquilizer? <laughs> Can he see me? Yeah, but not the same way you see him. See, to him, you just probably look like a big lump. A uh, uh, very handsome big lump. Yeah. What are you doing, kid? I want to find out how old he is. Whoa, does that hurt him? No, it's like if I pluck the hair out of your head. Hey, don't even think about it. <laughs> wow! Let me see. Let me see. Wow. <laughs> what am I looking at? Well, you know how you find out how old the tree is by looking at its rings? Yeah, yeah. Well, fish scales have rings just like that. Oh, I can't believe this. What? Nick, this fish is 168 years old. Get it, you're kidding me. He looks good for his age. <laughs> Think about it. This fish is older than any man alive. Jeez, he's four times me. I feel young again. He, he, he was swimming around when Beethoven was alive. <laughs> you know, this guy's seen everything. Civil War, World War I, the Big Two, Korea, Nam, even a little piece. Everything from covered wagons to rocket ships. He's a real survivor, Nick. He's one tough fish. He could be a Marine. <laughs> But too bad he's going to be dead in a few weeks. Come on, let's go before Dr. Ludwin comes back. Hey, 168 years old. And look at him. He moves around like a fish half his age. <laughs> Are you going out for the swimming team this year? Are you kidding? Chlorine ruins my hair. Not do. Do fish think? Not like humans, but they do have brains, yes. Oh, so there's some thought going through those little fish heads. I guess so. Let's take a flounder. Would a flounder say, hey, how come both my eyes are on one side of my head? Yeah, that's possible. Well, if it was me, I'd wonder. What, if I came back tomorrow, will the fish recognize me? I don't think so, Nick. You only met you one time. But I did see some intelligence in those eyes. Like he was thinking, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. What am I doing? We're talking about a fish here. Yeah, yeah, but a great fish.
Matthew. Oh, I'm studying, Mommy. I'm studying. Never mind. I got to talk to you, kid. What is it, Nick? They, these guys won't let me sleep. What are you talking about? We got work to do, kid. We got to save the fish. Yeah. You mean it? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Oh, wow, does that pizza smell good? My nose wouldn't know it's too stuffed. Have a Halls. Halls Vapor Action penetrates deep to help your stuffy nose feel clearer while Halls soothes your cough. Halls Vapor Action works. Now let's work on some pizza. Just the two of us. That great dentine taste makes it nicer to be together because not even mouthwash can freshen your breath better than when you're chewing dentine. Just the two of us, you and I. Eddie, this is Mrs. Butterworth. Hello, Eddie. I love your syrup. I need two syrups, regular and light. Mrs. Butterworth. And they're both delicious because... Because they're thick and rich and buttery. She really talks better than you. Mrs. Butterworth is twice as thick as maple syrup, so it pours slower. And it's made with grade A butter. Mrs. Butterworth's regular and light. <laughs> Eddie, are you sleeping again? Nope. I'm watching Magnum again. <laughs> when it comes to action and adventure, come home to Tom Selleck. Come home to Magnum on Channel 12. We got a one of pepperoni with anchovies. Watch, what are you doing? I'm watching Magnum. He's smooth. He's sexy. He's hot. Lady! You want to watch your machine as soon as I'm done watching Magnum. Come home to Tom Selleck. Come home to Magnum. Weekdays at 5. Come home to Channel 12. Let's see. Blue Ribbon Motors, Executive Car Rental, Quality Automobile Leasing, Rent the Wreck. That's us. We pick up the van, get the fish, and we're on our way to Lake Michigan. You know, maybe taking the fish isn't such a good idea. I mean, you know, now that I think about it, this is a lot like stealing. No, it's not. This is stealing. <laughs> well, you know, what Dr. Ludwin's doing is a lot like murder. I mean, he knows that fish is going to die. So, so what's worse, murder or stealing? Worst thing is to be murdered while you're stealing. <laughs> Well, maybe we should just go through proper channels. Start a petition or something. Oh, great. How long did you say that fish has to live? Uh, a month, maybe two weeks. By the time you gather all your signatures, the, it'll be too late. What should I do, Nick? I can't tell you what to do, kid. Of course you can. Nick, I'm very impressionable. <laughs> you gotta make up your own mind. All I know is sometimes you can afford to play by the rules, and sometimes you can't, kid. Let's go for it. Hello, men. Sheldon Paxton reporting for duty. What's with the camouflage makeup? This way I'll blend in with the bushes. Sheldon, we're gonna be in a hallway. You'd be better off painting a light switch on your cheek. Sheldon, maybe you should just stay here. Not tonight. For the first time in my life, I feel like I've got the right stuff. Just came in the wrong package. We really need these guys. Yeah, we need four guys to carry the tank. It's got to weigh a ton. Okay, wait, let me, let me figure this out. Okay, it's a 25-gallon tank. Fresh water weighs 8.33 pounds per gallon. Plus the fish, plus the tank. It's going to weigh 240 pounds. Can't we just wrap the fish in a newspaper or something? <laughs> Relax, that's why we got the four of us, okay? Let's move out. Wait a minute, Nick. What now? What's the plan? The plan? We walk in, we get the fish, we walk out. It's brilliant in its simplicity. Sheldon, can you keep quiet, please? I'd like to do that, Nick, but I gotta be me. This is gonna be a long night.
It's okay. Where's Sheldon? Sheldon, what's with the weasel? It's all right. It's just that when I get scared, I have trouble breathing, that's all. There's nothing to be scared about. Easy, easy. That's right, you're fine. Okay, you're not scared? Was that guard armed? <gasps> They're not armed. Creepy here. It ain't creepy here. It's a regular classroom. Look, hearts. <laughs> Some kidneys. Oh, a few eyeballs. Uh, get out of here. Sheldon, you can't leave now. We're going to get caught. I know. We're not going to get caught. Yes, we are. Why are we going to get caught? Because I always get caught. <laughs> We're going to get kicked out of school for this. My whole life just flashed right before my eyes. That quick? Guys, I'm only 14. <laughs> This is the biggest mistake I've ever made. Oh, man, are you guys finished feeling sorry for yourselves? No, I think we can squeeze out a few more minutes. <laughs> hey, somebody's coming. I think there's three of them. We're never going to save that fish now. Hey. I can't believe you guys are caving in. You know, you got a poor fish banging his head against a glass cage trying to get home to the Great Lakes. That was beautiful, Nick. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Sheldon, there's a second of time when you run or you stay and do what has to be done. How's a guy like me going to do what has to be done? Okay, an old sergeant's trick. Whatever you want to do, think it through in your mind, and it'll happen, kid. If that was true, I wouldn't be a virgin. <laughs> I'm going to create a diversion. I'm going to make the guards see me. When they chase after me, you guys go and rescue the fish. Wait, Nick. Don't Marines usually draw straws to see who goes? Yeah. Let's draw straws. You got any straws? Nobody told me to bring any straws. You got everything else. Hey, just one take. No straws. Okay, uh, you want to do one potato, two potato, three potato, four? Oh, I'm going to go. Okay, guys? Nick. What? Nick, it's up to me now. You? When I was standing there, I was doing a gut check. And I decided I don't want to spend the rest of my life running away from guys who flick towels at me. So I'm going to go out there and do what has to be done. What has to be done again? <laughs> Created the version. I'm your man. Over here! I'm a vandal! I'm a vandal! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm really proud of Sheldon. Yeah, he really did have the right stuff. Yeah, now it's our turn. Can't we just bask in Sheldon's glory? <laughs> Come on, let's rescue a fish. Hey, Pa. You probably can't understand me, but I'm gonna set you free. After everything you lived through, you should be allowed to live out your life. You shouldn't have to die in some lousy tank. And I shouldn't be talking to a fish. <laughs> There's supposed to be four of us. <laughs> you ever think of going on a diet, buddy? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I hope you appreciate this. Woo! Yeah! All right. All right. We did it! I can't believe we did it! Hey, you know, you're a real hero, Sheldon. <laughs> he knows. Hang in there, fish. In an hour, you're going to be in Lake Michigan. <laughs> All right. I, I yeah. feel great. Woo! Yeah. Right. 
What? Do you think we did something great? What is great? You tell the average fellow in the street, hey, I just rescued a fish. Maybe he says that was great. Maybe he says, hey, I think you bought a ticket to the funny farm. <laughs> What's that fish gonna do now that he's back in the lake? Um, swim around. He's gonna forage for food. Mate? Mate? At his age? I'm impressed. <laughs> Actually, the dancer fish mates for its life. No kidding. I thought only Italians did that. Well, their mating ritual is actually very interesting. You see, the male waits for nightfall before he approaches the female. Then he makes these exaggerated movements with his tail and circles her. And if she accepts him, well, then they go off side by side, mimicking each other's movements. It's like a beautiful, beautiful dance in the moonlight. Kid, maybe we did something great. I ain't too old to be soon forgotten And I'm not too young to try I tried it one way, now I'll try it another And it's not too late and I will soon discover the answer Looking for some answers Your heart be broken by the look in a lady's eye You might be younger but you'll soon be older And everybody sometimes needs a shoulder for some answers Looking for some answers Major Bozo paper. He wants to write about the meaning of life. Yeah? I'm 14. What do I know about life? I just got my retainer off last summer. <laughs> Here's one large with everything. No anchovies. <laughs> How you doing, Nick? Sure. <laughs> you know, I thought of you the other day. I went back to the lake where we rented the paddle boat. <laughs> Whoa, that thing tipped over fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you look real cute with a duck on your head. <laughs> Well, your pizza's getting called. Bye. Bye, Sean. What ever happened with you two? Weren't you? Yeah, yeah, but that's over. I don't get it. She's pretty. She's nice. She probably looks great wet. <laughs> you know how it is with women. Yeah, sure. Remind me. <laughs> Sometimes you go out with some great, terrific girls, but you just don't get serious about each other. Get the drift? No, you lost me when you said go out with someone. If it's not such a strong attraction, then you, you, you become friends instead. Oh, I see. Friends. <laughs> Only friends. Sometimes it's a fine line. You lost that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. You lost that love and feeling, now it's gone, gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I guess you're on the prowl, huh? Cat burglars are on a prowl. Uh, me, I'm eligible. So you want to go out and look for chicks together? <laughs> you got some milkshake on your lip. I didn't know the answer, so I just wrote everything really messy so you couldn't actually read it. <laughs> God, you're so smart. <laughs> Did 
you realize there's no women on the campus my age to date? Of course there are. Yeah, who? Well, you can start asking out some of the teachers. How about the nurse? The nurse is 70. <laughs> really? Well, then she's been around. Do I look 70 to you? Not after you shave. Have you ever had the feeling that a pen is going to open up in your shirt pocket and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it? Hi, Carl. Carl, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Reach out. Connect. Okay. Uh, just off the top of your head, what's the meaning of life? Well, that's easy. Life is a long, agonizing wait for death. Let the good times roll. This. Anyone. Now, come on, remember, it's your impression that counts. Elsa, what do you think it is? It's an ink blot, Miss Adler. <laughs> now, that's correct, Elsa, but what does it look like to you? It looks like an ink blot, Miss Adler. <laughs> Business major? Computer programming. Right. Okay, let's try another one. Matthew. I see a school of fish waving their fins, following the warm currents on their way to the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that's beautiful, Matthew. I see a school of fish. <laughs> Matthew, this is a different slide. These are different fish. <laughs> Nick. What do you see? Well, this might not be original, but I see two overweight individuals doing a ballet. <laughs> in the nude. He threw her in the air, and she's about to get hurt. And he already is. <laughs> Mr. Chase, you have quite a mind. Thank you. Okay, I think we get the idea here. Sheldon, can you get the lights? Sheldon. I see two gingerbread men in the nude. Sheldon, the lights, please. Okay, that's it. Um, for next week, read the chapter on abnormal behavior and review that chapter on sleep deprivation. What sleep deprivation? You slept through it. That was a great lecture, Miss Adler. Oh, thank you, Nick. Uh, I have a question for you. Yes. That's a nice sweater. Oh, thanks. That's not a question. Is that a nice sweater? <laughs> I think you must have something else on your mind. Would you go out with me this weekend? What? Forget I asked. I didn't say anything. I left with the rest of the class. No, Nick, wait. <laughs> I don't think so. No, please. You don't have to leave. This is a little awkward. You noticed, huh? You're my student. I'm your teacher. So that's a no, right? Probably not a good idea. Okay, don't worry about it. I just saw the light hitting off your hair, so I took a shot, you know? I'll go see the nurse. Nick, it's not that I don't like you. I, The nurse? It's just a joke. It's tough to get a date around here to don't think the Cuban Missile Crisis is a video game. <laughs> you are funny. Yeah. Maybe some other time. Right, right, some other time. So you don't want to go to a movie with me? What's playing?
Thanks, Nick. Almost got sucked in there. So, how do I look? Too irresistible? Maybe I should mess my hair or something. Well, terrific. Is there other stuff you can do? So, Nick, you're going out tonight, huh? How about you, Matthew? You got a date? I had a date, but I had to cancel because... Well, she isn't born yet? <laughs> hey, the kid got priorities. He's right in the middle of writing an essay on the meaning of life. But once he finishes, watch out, he's going after your chicks. <laughs> we got him on the run. Look, she probably waited long enough. Wait a minute. Okay, it's after the date when you're dropping her off. Are you going to kiss her? I don't know. I got my reputation to think of. <laughs> Sheldon, what do you think is the meaning of life? There is no meaning of life because we're not really alive. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's all an illusion. In fact, when I turn away, you're not there anymore. You don't exist. <laughs> Sheldon. I can hear you. <laughs> My God, it works. <laughs> Here you go. Oh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good movie. Yes, R good movie. I especially liked how the opening sequences reflected the psychological stresses of the main characters. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> nice carpet. Oh, thank you. Uh, what color would you call that? Gray. Gray. Boy, it's really nice gray. One of my favorites. Uh, this might be a little risky, but are we having a good time? Want to hear something funny? Do I ever? Well, I really had some difficulty concentrating on the movie. You too? When that girl sat in front of us with the big hair. <laughs> you know, Nick, this is a little embarrassing, but... All during the movie, I just kept wondering if you were going to make a move. No kidding. I was wondering when you were going to make a move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kate, I, I, I can't believe I'm sitting here calling you Kate. I was a little intimidated going out with you, you being my professor and all. You know, I was a little intimidated going out with you. By me? Oh, yeah, you've traveled all over the world. You were in the Marines. You've had a lot of experiences. You're salty. Kind of like a cracker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, do you have any music around here? Yeah, yeah. Radio. <laughs> that was quite a step. Yes, it's a military move. I surrender. <laughs> hey, Kate, you, you live, uh... Alone. I was just being nosy. That's all right. Uh, actually, I was married once. Oh. Just didn't work out. How oh. about you? Me? Nah. You move around too much in the Marine Corps. And I never found a woman who wanted to live in a trench. <laughs> You're very nice to talk to. Well, so are you.
So, what do you got under the carpet? <laughs> Nick, what are you doing here? It's after midnight. Something wrong? No. I just needed to see you. What'd you do? Get lucky? Did your mother know you talk like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just trying to be friendly and masculine at the same time. <laughs> Please don't tell my mother. Nick, is that you? No, it's a burglar. You're fish of your life. <laughs> oh, I see your essay's going well. I don't understand what's going on. I was always the smartest kid in my class. In kindergarten, I learned how to do algebra. By the time I got to junior high, I was speaking French and Italian. This essay's driving me crazy. All I can say is, I don't know. Well, at least you can say it in three different languages. <laughs> so how'd it go? Huh? Your date. Oh, well, it was fine. Great. It must have been great. It's 2.30 in the morning. You know what that means. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> yeah, well, Kate and I went out. No kidding? Kate? Yeah, we went to a movie and then we went to her place. Her place? Kate has a place? No, she lives in a cave. <laughs> we went to her apartment. It was nice. Good carpet. <laughs> then about 12 o'clock, I went to pizza, pizza, pizza. Oh, you were hungry. You weren't hungry. I went to see Sharon. What do you mean? We spent a couple of hours together. I thought you liked Kate. I do. Well, then why did... I, I'm a guy. That's what guys do. It's uh, instinctive. It's uh, conditioning. It's... Creepy. Hey, talk to me when you're a little older, okay? I hope I never get that old. <laughs> Anybody else want to take a shot at me? <laughs> I heard that, you. <laughs> Her name was Roberta. I met her at a, at a dance on the base. In fact, I was dancing with a girlfriend, and she sort of cut in as a joke. She was the type of girl that when she walked in the room, boy, everybody noticed. Maybe it was just me, but you could go anywhere. Anywhere and had a great time with this girl. One time we went to a Dairy Queen. Sitting at the next table was a lady. She had a hair piled straight to a point on top of her head. It looked like it was made by Dairy Queen. <laughs> so we start laughing, you know. But the lady's date gets mad. There's a fight. The manager calls a cop. Boy, were we happy. <laughs> you know, people laugh at those Dear John letters, you know. But one of those babies, they come, it ain't funny. It's like getting a rug pulled out from under you. I still have trouble opening my mail. <laughs> I was overseas, you know, and I was sort of carrying Roberta with me. Like a portable note to get back home safe, you know. I haven't told that story to anyone in a long time. Maybe I never told her. So, Big Shot, what do you think? <laughs> I know. You're figuring, that's why I'm scared to like Kate, right? That's why I had to run off to Sharon. Well, you're wrong. Huh. Well, maybe you're not wrong. Maybe you're half right. But the point is, kid, you talk too much. <laughs> Can I 
anyone sum up our discussion on early childhood development? Sheldon. Okay. <laughs> Sheldon. Sheldon. <laughs> early childhood. Yeah. If your dad promises you a bike and he doesn't get it for you, it can really screw you up for life. Well, that's a little simplistic, Sheldon. Okay. But if he promises you a telescope, too, and a pony, a real one, not one of those heads on a stick. <laughs> Good. Good, Sheldon. Okay, uh, that's it. I'll see you Wednesday. Please don't fall behind in your reading. Come on. No, I'm sorry. I gotta take care of something. I'll catch up to you later. Okay, I'll be at the library. Look me up under life. The meaning of. <laughs> so, how's it going? Great. I want you to know I had a real nice time the other night. Thank you, Nick. You know, uh... You are not like any other guy I've ever dated. Thanks. That's a compliment, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. I want you to know it was good that we could talk. Yeah, yeah. I have to tell you something, because we should start off things in a completely level way, up front. You know the other night when I dropped you off? Mm -hmm. Well, well, forget it, okay? No, Nick, what? Tell no, me. it's really not that important. Come on now, Nick. You can't start something and not finish it. Tell me, what is it? <laughs> well, it is pretty funny. Uh -huh. You know, and you being a psychologist, you'll understand all this right off the bat. <laughs> well, when I left you after our date, I went out with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, right? Ow! <laughs> You're not taking this very well. Oh. I'm sorry. Let's talk about it. I have nothing to say to you except that you better study really hard for the final. <laughs> I made a mistake, that's all. Mr. Chase, no one, not even sensitive, sophisticated lady psychologists like myself require the degree of honesty that you just dumped on me. We don't want it, we don't need it, we don't like it, got it? It's seeping in. <laughs> wait, wait, I liked you. I haven't let myself like anyone in such a very long time. I just didn't know how to handle it. I'm sorry. Well, I liked you too, Nick, and believe me, I didn't expect to either. Is that why you kicked me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, when the pain was knifing through me, I thought to myself, I said, hey, she really likes you too. <laughs> I think we should just take things very slowly with us. Because you're my teacher, right? Well, partly that, yes. But also, I'm, I'm just not real sure about you yet. Well, that's fair. I'm not that sure about me either. <laughs> I got a few things to work out. Just take it one step at a time. Well, one step is fine. Don't have to be big steps. No. They can be little ones. In the name of love, before you break my heart, the oh over. And so, in a universal sense, life can probably be reduced to a never ending series of questions which can never be answered, ever, <laughs> ever. Thank you, Susie. There don't seem to be any questions from the class. If there were, you couldn't answer them anyway. <laughs> ah, Matthew, you look like you want to be put out of your misery. The Meaning of Life by Matthew Wiggins. Inherently, there is no meaning in life, except for that which we, as humans, give to it. Sometimes things are going pretty well, so we say, life is good. Sometimes you can't even get arrested. <laughs> but as John Lennon once wrote, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. The important words in that sentence are happens and making other plans. 
Because although it's true that things can happen to you that are pretty bad, you can't ever give up trying to find happiness. No matter how old you are, or how scared you are, or how much you've been hurt before. When all else fails, sometimes it's just good to have someone to take a walk with. It's a small thing, but you'd be surprised. Whatever your sports preference, you can find it every night on 12 News. With Ben Hamlin and Wally Bruckner, you can expect the best on 12 Sports. The right combination. you're shaving, I can see the hairs growing back. <laughs> Maybe I should try it on my head. <laughs> An aerosol can? You got any idea what that's doing to the ozone layer? Ask Sheldon, he lives there. <laughs> Chip, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> we got a date, of course. Ooh. I almost got a date. Almost. Well, I called this one girl, but she told me she was dead, so to hell with her. You guys so shallow that all you can talk about are girls? Huh? Yeah. Well, I, for one, spend a lot of my spare time in an ashram. What's an ashram? Don't know what an ashram is? I know. Just want to see if you know. An ashram is a quiet, spiritual retreat where an individual goes in quest of his eternal soul. And it's all you can eat. Splish splash, I was taking a bath And all about Saturday night Roll the tub, just relaxing in the tub Thinking everything was alright Rub-a-dub Hey, you guys hear anything about this film festival for dumb documentaries? Yeah, it's two days of amazingly stupid films that were meant to be serious You know, stuff like terrible driver's ed movies And sex education films from the 50s There was no sex in the 50s so, Nick, you gonna go to this festival or what? It's free. Free? Why? Is it lousy? No, it's really great. University throws it like once a year to give us all a break from the pressures of school. Yeah, you know, they say that uh, one out of every three students flips out. <laughs> one out of three? Yeah. <laughs> I'm safe. What's going on? The Pledging Omega. Okay, you're the six. In there. Hey, Nick. 
Nick, is that you? Matthew? Ta-da! <laughs> no wonder you were hiding. What's these? These are shoulder pads. <laughs> you look like you're shoplifting hams. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get in this very hip fraternity. Delta Kappa Omega. You see, what? they're having this rush party this afternoon. Hope they like it. That's so important to you? Yeah, because, see, when you're in a fraternity, you're one of the guys. No, no, you're one of the duckies. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I just seen a bunch of pledges quacking their way down a hole. See, I'd give anything to be humiliated like that. Yeah. yeah, because you belong. You know, you should consider joining. Me? Well, no thanks. You know, being a Marine is enough joining for me. Look, this here's my first platoon, kid. Oh. Um, there you are. Nope. No. Uh, well, that's not you. Nope. Is that you? Here's me. That's you? <laughs> hey, you look good then. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, you look good now. Hey, am I in trouble? No sweat, kid. Talking about being part of the guys. I was a Marine for 20 years. Now's my chance at being an individual. Oh, Nick, look, being an individual is highly overrated. I mean, I should know. You know, I started in high school when I was 11. Well, you were special. Yeah, I was so special. No one ever talked to me. Well, they probably couldn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you're probably exaggerating. Nick, look, the only people who would eat lunch with me were the ladies who wore hairnets in the cafeteria. <laughs> the other kids probably were jealous because you were too bright. Nick, intelligence isn't highly valued in high school. You know, it ranks somewhere between having good dental hygiene and playing the accordion. Your time will come, kid. No, Nick, just once. I want to be on the inside looking out so I can laugh at guys like me. <laughs> in that suit, I wouldn't laugh at anybody. You know, I want to say I belong to a frat. You know, people look up to guys in frats. Is really that important? What other people think? Yeah, I'm 14. It is important what everybody else thinks. Okay. Maybe a hat. A hat? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a hat will give this outfit a little class. Well, that's an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe another hat. <laughs> Hi, Nick. This is terrific. An empty seat. Uh, we could sit together. Nick, listen, there's something I need to tell you. Yeah, I know. Our date last week was great. <laughs> yes, it was great, but that's not it. Uh, hello. Nick, I'd like you to meet Ian. This is actually Ian's seat. <laughs> of course it is. I was just resting on my way to my real seat. <laughs> Ian's a visiting professor of poetry from UCLA. California. Oh, it's supposed to be great this time of year. When are you going back? <laughs> Not to the end of the semester. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, look, be careful with that popcorn. One of those things get lodged in your throat, you might be flopping on the floor for minutes before anybody sees you. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back. No, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Hey, Nick. Hiya, hey, kid. How'd you do at the rush party? Well, I went. Yeah? Yeah. And they rushed me in and rushed me right out again. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I thought that hat we picked out would help out. Oh, no problem. Hey, check out my new clothes. You look like a zipper salesman, kid. <laughs> I mean, what fraternity is going to take it because you dress like them? Hey, you think I'm dressed this way to impress some fraternity? Don't you think I've learned my lesson, Nick? You know, this is the real me. <laughs> Hey, dudes, Omega? Absolutely. Hey, guys, listen, I heard that you were having a rush party in a couple days. I thought I might stop by the house and uh, let the brothers take a good look at me. <laughs> that is, if you guys think it's, uh, it's a good idea. Okay, I'll be there. Okay, everybody, welcome to the festival. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to start the night rolling uh, with a film that was voted dumbest documentary three years in a row. Saginaw University's favorite, a lighthearted look at thermonuclear war. Dumb, <laughs> 
Something. Do what? I'm paralyzed. At least get a number. Wait, can I get your number? Sure, um, but I don't have a pen. I do. There. There. I really have to be going. Wait, wait, uh, would you like half an egg salad sandwich? I'll see you later. Wait, I have at least 12 more places to look. <laughs> I think you know, I was this close to ecstasy. You know, I almost got her name. Well, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. You should write that down if you ever find your pen. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? This uh, next documentary uh, we haven't seen, uh, but uh, I understand it's a lap riot uh, from the United States Marine Corps presents its instructional film CIN-108 with a very snappy title, Digging a Ditch. I'm Sergeant Nicholas Chase. <laughs> Hello, troops. Nick, Nick, that's you. Element of field maneuvers. Ha, Nick, you're up there and down here. <laughs> it is something that will come in handy throughout your maternity, mater military life. Whether it's you look a ditch, silly. A trench or a hole, we will need a personal entrenching tool from our L782 pack. You assemble it by A, removing its sleeve from its sleeve. Come on, Nick. Hold out. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Yeah. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Unfolding the shovel and C. Grasping the slip ring in your right hand. You You're the it. right hand. <laughs> okay, stop it. Just perfectly. Stop the film. Get that shirt. Nick, take it easy. Stop it, I said. Nick, Nick. 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 Hello, Mr. 
Chase. How do you do, Dean DeWitt? <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> you can probably get your hand out if you let go of the candies. <laughs> oh. No wonder they made you head of the school. <laughs> nice place you got here. Thank you. It looks like Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> Chase, I have a report here about an incident at the film festival last night. Yes, I wanted to talk about that. It says here you threw a chair against the screen. Yes, I did. That was a mistake. And then you tried to unscrew the projectionist's head. <laughs> I know my conduct was inappropriate, but people were laughing. Most people handle embarrassment with a bit more grace. Hey, I'd like to pay for the damages. It comes to $412. In installments. <laughs> Look, I'd like them not to show the film tonight, that's all. People have a right to see it. It wasn't even any good. If we stopped showing things just because they weren't good, there wouldn't be any George Papard movies. <laughs> that film had lots of mistakes. It wasn't even supposed to be released. I am sorry, they are showing Digging a Ditch again tonight. Come on, Dean, you could do something about it. Please. I have a feeling this is very important to you. You have no idea. Why don't you talk about it? Share it with me. Share? Yeah, open up. Tell me what's really on your mind. Look, it's really very personal. Why don't you try talking to me like I was a member of your family? <laughs> <laughs> in all due respect, sir, you don't look like anybody in my family. Your face looks like it belongs on a stamp. <laughs> well, Mr. Chase, I was here for you, but you chose to be somewhere else. Yeah. Let me explain the situation. <clears throat> the movie will be shown tonight, and I don't expect any more outbursts. Mr. Chase? Uh, Miss Reynolds? Uh, send in those students who have been keeping everyone awake all hours of the night. Who wants in the classroom? <laughs> Kappa Zeta. Affirmative. What do you think? I feel like I'm talking to the side of a toaster. <laughs> Roger, Redbird leader. How many people did you eat lunch with today? None. It's all me. That's all yours? When I get upset, I eat everything I can get my hands on. Nick, how am I fish? <laughs> Your fish are fine. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're still upset about this movie, aren't you? Nah. Yeah. The whole school was laughing. Nick, look, I'm sure nobody even noticed it was you. And if they didn't, they forgot about it already. Uh, Nick? Um, <laughs> you, you know, usually I'm a very depressed sort of person. But, um, <laughs> last night I laughed. Thank you. Okay, okay, fine. So there's one jerk on campus. Oh, yes, they're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. We'll make a film about a man who's sad and lonely. And all I have to do is act naturally. Hey, so you're a campus craze. That's just great. Hey, you're the one who told me not to worry so much about what people think of you. Yeah, I see you really took my advice. So I'm going through an adolescent stage. You know, you should be past all that by now. Okay, but when I saw that film, it wasn't personal, kid. I, I can't talk about it. Oh, hey, Nick. Hey, Kate. Listen, you know about what happened here last night? If you want to talk about it, I mean, not to a psychologist, but to a friend. Yeah, Nick, you know, I, I think we should talk to her. I mean, we'll feel better. I think she was talking to me, specifically. I'm sorry. It's just when you hurt, I hurt. And when you cry, I cry. Matthew. And when you say shut up, I shut up. 
Thank you anyway, Kate. How's Ian? Oh, gone. Uh, he got a call from UCLA and he had to fly back to Los Angeles right away. Oh, too bad. Must have been a poetry emergency. <laughs> I don't know, would you, would you like to get together tonight? Uh, maybe we could play miniature golf? Hey, I've been working on my windmill shot. Uh, thank you, Katie, but I don't feel like it, okay? I'm just gonna take a walk. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we need to be alone. <laughs> Hey, Nick, something told me I'd find you here. What happened to your dreams of conformity? Look, Nick, I thought about what you said about being an individual, and it's the only way for me to go. How many fraternities turned you down? Seven. <laughs> uh, I gotta be me whether I want to or not. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Yeah, star in one of these movies. I know him. We take showers together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's continue with the film that last night had uh, technical difficulties. Uh, once again, backed by popular demand, Digging a Ditch! Yeah. I'm Sergeant Nicholas Chase. Hello, troops. Hi, Demonstrate an important element of field maneuvers. It is something... Stop. Oh, come on, Nick. Oh, come come on. On. Do I have to come back there again? Please. Look, I know I spoiled your fun last night. I'm sorry. Hey, we accept. Let's sit down. <laughs> I know it was a, it's a dumb training film. Uh, but it was our job to to teach these guys going over to Vietnam. Me, I had to show them how to dig ditches deep enough to keep them alive. But when I, I look at the film and see the faces, I still smell that place. Something was always burning. This kid, Lenny Corallo, what a nutty kid. He used to always sing that Rolling Stones song, I can't get no satisfaction. Drive me nuts. But he ain't around anymore. All I'm trying to say is that if you have to go through something like that, make sure it's for a good reason. Read the papers, watch the news. Because if there is a next time, it's gonna be you guys. was once an inarticulate mass of lifeless tissues, may I now present a cultured, sophisticated man about town. Hit it! If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes, or cutaway coat, perfect fits. <laughs> Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying mighty hard to look like Gary Cooper. Cooper! 